All right, we are live. Welcome to Beastly Thoughts, episode 150. 150, Ooh, baby. That's a lot of goddamn episodes, guys. That is a lot of episodes. This is an important know. episode, guys. This really is an important episode. My God. 150 episodes, Briar, since the day that you and I talked in that black cave with no lighting. And, and, and it was what? just, wow. You got You had to have been there. The Robbie. first episodes of Beastly Thoughts were done on a <laughs> game capturing a Skype conversation off an Xbox One. Oh! <laughs> that was on before I was on the show, man. Yeah. That was a and, long yeah. and, time ago. And on top of that, Robbie, that was before I had... I was privy to the information that lighting actually existed. So right. I sat next to my living room window, hoping the sun wouldn't go down. And unfortunately it did. Oh. <laughs> Briar remembers. He said, well, I've never seen a black guy get blacker as I talked to him. <laughs> I mean, over the last 30 minutes, your blackness has oh gone up God. about five levels. All I see is yeah. It's like, it's like a dimmer off. switch on a light switch. Jeez, man. <laughs> Beastly's just like moving that switch down. I get blacker and yes. blacker. The slider was just moving throughout that episode. And, and the funny thing was, I was noticing oh. it during that, that very second episode of BC Thoughts. Uh -huh. I was like, holy shit. I, I know I'm not this black. All I see is my eyes. What's happening? 150 episodes. Thank you guys so much for being here with us. Very special moment. Uh, and, and thank you all for being a part of it. Jesus. 150 yeah, yeah. episodes. Thank it's you so a, much. It doesn't even ride. feel like that long to me. Not um, even. Yeah, it does it. Does it? I don't know how many episodes Robbie's been here, but I want to say at least a hundred episodes. I've been here that, just yeah. about three years now. I know that it's been just around three years now. This month, uh, it just doesn't even feel like it. It's amazing. It is really oh. is incredible. And, and for the people who are new to watching this uh, this show on Twitch, Robbie, We're sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah, let's start with the apology first. I'm I, sorry I you actually... watch this every week. This horrible, horrible show. I actually We're just met... a train wreck. I met Robbie playing Call of Duty Ghosts, and we were playing the new DLC with Michael Myers, sure and did. Robbie was uh, in there talking, and he said, are you the Beastly Gamer? And I was like, yeah, I'm Beastly Gamer, and he actually mentioned Briar and some of the guys who did the show back then, and I was like, oh, you actually know me and these clowns? I was, was a huge I, fan, yeah. I couldn't believe it. He asked, could he you know, meet uh, Briar and some of the other guys, and he ended up being a perfect perfect fit for the show, yeah. and, and things have not oh, been better since. What a disappointment since, since that ended up being, huh, Robbie? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, not what I hoped. Sure, I, if you want to so go that cool way. When he's not when live. He said... <laughs> <laughs> and then you start. In, in like, reality, he's kind of Ooh. a dick. <laughs> These guys are kind of jerks to me. Yeah, it's like, I don't know. Well, Canadian jokes, man. It's just like America. <laughs> I just can't win. Yeah, Yo, we got a lot to talk about today. Uh, I want to talk about what I've been playing. I want to hear what you guys have been playing. Uh, why don't we start off with Gary though, because he's got fancy new hardware, and I'm always. Yes. Always ready to nerd out about new stuff. Yeah, buddy. Yeah, I bought some toys this week. It's been fantastic. I often get, get the chance to buy some. So that this week, um, we've got some coverage of the NVIDIA Shield tablet, for people that are interested. Uh, but before we get into that, I'm going to cover off one PC game and one VR experience, if you guys don't mind. Uh, mm. I promised last week on the show that we would cover off Player Unknown's Battlegrounds, PUBG. Um, so I spent some time in that, put about 25, maybe 30 hours into Player Unknown's Battlegrounds. So in the past six months, as you guys are probably aware, survival games have just, apps or Battle Royale survival games have absolutely spiked in terms of popularity. So yep. H1Z1's gone from 8,000 concurrent players to somewhere in the region of between 50 to 100,000 daily. So it's, you know, real growth in, in that <sighs> sector partly due to their streamability on Twitch and just partly because they're a great thing to hop into and you never know if a round's going to go the distance or you're going to get shot in the back the second you jump out of the plane. But this is a, a beefed up H1Z1. It's come from um, Brendan Green, who's the guy behind the DayZ mod of Armour 2, which was one of the first popular games. It takes everything that H1Z1 does and just amps it up. You know, better graphics, more guns, more variety, um, uh, bigger and more diverse maps. The, I say maps map, but there's lots of different islands in the map. Uh, there's more dynamism to it, to it, so there's airstrikes. Effectively, the game is 100 people dropped from various aircrafts that come in from different sides of the map, and you have to be the last guy standing out of 100 uh, on this map. Played it, loved it. It's early access, though, so there are some system issues. There's some optimizations oh, to be done. It's buggy, and the net code is pretty rough from what i've seen too the detection is a little off yeah that's always my problem with these games is they always they look so promising days day z 
Uh, H1Z1. H1Z1. They all look so fun. They and never so get drama. finished. And they never, yeah, nobody ever finishes these fucking things. Right. They're they, always they, in beta. They take their money and they run with them, Brian. That's why. They get tons of people who are early adopters who jump in the ground floor and they say, wow, we just made tons of loot. There's no reason to finish it. Just let them play it the way it is. And they never finish the game. So with PUBG, I think it might buck the curve on that one. I mean, it's $25 to $30 now if you want to go and pick it up. So it's almost full price as is. It's getting huge amounts of support. We're talking three to four patches a month. There's a lot of interest in it because the esports scene are picking it up and people are wanting to you know, play it competitively, get teams together. So the biggest streamers are using it as their main game. People like Summit, Lyric are playing this daily. It's doing very yep. well on Twitch. For sure. Oh, it's huge. Yeah. And it looks awesome. Yeah, it's, it's a great game to try out. Um, I'd say if you're thinking about picking it up and you've got $25 and want something really fun to play that does not going to be uh, a huge open world game that's going to suck 100 hours out of you, pick it up, try it. I'm sure, you know, it's a, if you buy it on Steam, you can always return it if you don't like it after a few hours. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. that's a good point. The, the nice thing about these games, too, is that you can jump in. If you got like 20 minutes, half an hour to, you know, you just want to do something quick. You know, you don't need to sit there for a four-hour gaming session to get something out of a game like this. And I, I like that. I, I used to like that about Call of Duty uh, when I when I liked when I played a lot of that. Um, when you liked it, when weird, I man. liked it, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, I mean, the only you just thing... jump in and, and play for a while. I completely agree. And the only thing that I'd say that the kind of echoes that and tempers the experience if you're looking to get something with longevity is that this this game's doing very well on Twitch because it's the perfect format for presentation. So if you are a streamer, you've got a high stakes uh, situation, which is why the Division Survival did so well. This is a finite length of game. People can tune in and watch you and you know support you. They never know how the game's going to go. If yeah. you're a solo player that's just playing on your own without an audience, I, I found that it started to become a bit tiresome after playing it for one or two hours oh, wow. uh, in one sort of solid sitting. Games um, like this too, they I think they do real well as team based games. If you got a friend that you have to jump to, in yeah. with, it's so much more fun because the dynamic of working together to solve a problem, you know, what, whether it be an enemy or looting a building or whatever you're doing, um, but also just the you know having a friend to just kind of make fun of you when you do something stupid and yeah. you know to to do the same to him and just like you know it's it's the perfect kind of game for teamwork but also having a good time while you're doing it. Uh, in Destiny, Destiny, similar to how Destiny does. Destiny, I think it's totally paramount that you have someone that you know to play with. If you don't, it really becomes more of a chore than anything else. And I found that in games like this, games like DayZ, Day it only worked when I had my wife with me. If I was just in the world by myself on my PC running around doing things, yeah. I, I lacked that enthusiasm to go do it because there was no one who I knew to experience it with. So these type of games, these type of worlds... I think that you need to have someone who you know to be in that game with you. How's the yeah. UI and all that stuff, Gary? Is it you know pretty intuitive, pretty pretty solid? Is it buggy at all? Uh, I mean, Robbie might have some some views on the the UI as well, but from my perspective, it looks pretty solid. It's easy enough that it, sometimes it's difficult from Netco perspective, as as Robbie said, to pick things up. Sometimes yeah. you'll hit pick up four or five times to pick this thing up. That's not the UI. That's just the netcode. It is being optimized. There's also some intentional awkwardness to the UI because there has to be a conscious decision. If you're putting on a bandage, you need to come out the action to do it. Uh, if you're trying to load a, a clip onto your gun, they want you to have to make that decision. It, you know, you're vulnerable at all times in that uh, arena. So yeah, yeah it, it's functional, but um, I think it's intentionally over-engineered to make it a little bit cumbersome. But, but you know, all, all I'd say is if you if you've got the money and you want something that's fun to pick up and play, and you've got a beast of a PC because it is a hog on the requirements, then really yeah. pick it up. Yeah, yeah, very much so. I mean, nine series card if you want to play on anything other than the low. Really, that's, that's nine series GTX. Yeah, I would like to see somebody make something like this in VR. I think that'd be a lot of fun. Ooh, you know, actually, man, that'd be crazy. You know, you yeah. actually reload your weapons like you would in Onward, where it's like a realistic reload animation. And when you bandage yourself, you've got to actually wrap the bandage around the wounded part. That'd be a yeah. lot of fun running around. Oh, yeah, that'd be crazy, man. Would be cool. I mean, unless you get shot in the leg, because you look kind of crazy in the living room on the recliner, sticking your leg up in the air and, and grabbing your controller and going around your thigh over and over again. But <laughs> yeah, I think that'd be awesome. I mean, what's, it, he, what's he watching him? 
that was my, my main. Know. That was my main PC game. VR. I'll very quickly brush over this one because I didn't really do much VR. I did one thing because I like to have at least one VR experience on on the show each week. Uh, it's actually the Hawaiian Islands. Uh, it's a free demo. Uh, I say demo experience put out there by the Hawaiian Tourist Board. It's a collection of 360 videos and a rendered paraglide through all of the different Hawaiian islands. You choose where you want to go. The reason that I've cited it as something that's worth trying is it's on Samsung Gear VR, it's on Oculus, it's on um, Vive, it's, it's across the board. Uh, and it's actually something that's really well executed. It's a, a great example of what the future of tourism is going to look like. And if you want something, I, I've been on a lot of these sort of stand on the rails experiences, 360 ones, yeah. uh, and this has had the funding to make it you know, function really, really well. So if you want a nice break to Hawaii, uh, you want to see what tourism of the future is going to look like, check out the Hawaiian Islands. It's it's on phone VR as well. So, yeah, try it out. Save me a plane ticket. You just uh, step into VR, maybe turn on a heat lamp in the uh, in the office. <laughs> <laughs> maybe a fan with like a little water spritzer for that ocean breeze. <laughs> it's nice. I mean, what, what can I say? How can you be totally sure it's water, Briar? You, know, you just don't know. <laughs> I mean, it's 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 something. I, I like to put on at least one thing that everyone can access in VR that's worth yeah. trying. So that was that. But the the thing that sorry, basically. Oh no, I was just asking. I heard you go through lots of different uh, platforms. It's not for PSVR though, is it? No, it's one of those uh, open source gallery apps. I guess they call them. Uh, right. Sponsored sponsored by the Hawaiian Tourist Board. I I don't think Sony would want an advertisement on their platform really. So. Gotcha. That's All probably right. why it's not there. Uh, the thing that I've been most excited about and spent most of my time with the guys have seen me endlessly sending the messages about it and they've been saying leave me alone i, I have a life um stop stop texting me <laughs> is um this little baby here which is the nvidia shield oh, tablet wow. k1 now for anyone that doesn't know this is part of the nvidia shield range they did a portable clamshell gaming uh, console they did the tablet and they mm. do a streaming media box for the pc so this is a standard Android tablet, 8 inch, uh, NVIDIA Tegra K1 chip. Uh, it's got 1920 by 1200 resolution, can output 4K at 30 hertz with a mini HDMI out. Oh. Effectively, everything you'd want. Seriously? From, yeah. So you can use this as a, as a media box. Um, you can use Netflix in 4K from it to a TV. It's capable of, of streaming it that way. It's everything that you'd want from an 8 inch tablet. Uh, and it comes in at $150, brand new. Which, what? That's unbelievable. Wow. I, oh my god. I'm, I'm absolutely shocked that this isn't more wide known. Mainstream? So is it yeah. an Android tablet? It's like a a real Android tablet. A completely legitimate real Android tablet running okay. Nougat 7.0. Plus it has all the game features. Which I'll get into now. That's its party <laughs> trick. So <laughs> effectively, what, this is pretty much a standard Android tablet running 7.0. So it's, it's not been, it was actually released in late 2015. So these specs were cutting edge back then. Right now they're oh, sort yeah. of mid, middle of the market. But it's $150 and it's a, a 7.0 Android operating system. You can't complain Where, with that price. This gentleman is effectively the Nintendo Switch's daddy with a big swinging dick, is, is the way that I describe <laughs> it. Just like me. <laughs> well, there we go, first dick joke. Pretty point. much so. I mean... Comparing them to the, before I go into its party trick, which is the game stream system, if you compare them to the Switch, it's, it's actually a, a pretty similar size proposition, you know, you've not got anything that's massively, so if you're used to holding the Switch, this will be right at home just with a slightly larger screen. What this yep. does is take advantage of the GeForce uh, graphics cards, GeForce Game Stream, GeForce Now, um, and GeForce Play ecosystems. So with Game Stream, if you're familiar with the PS4's remote play system, mm -hmm. this is very, very similar. But for a PC with zero latency, the Xbox One controller and 60 frames per second. This at is 1080p. insane. God damn. Does this it is come insane. with the controller? I'm on their website right now. I see that. It looks <laughs> You've like, already sold it. Hey, look, Gary's it looks already like it comes sold. with that NVIDIA controller that they kind of just re released with the newest version of the Shield like, box for the TV. No, so. If you buy the media box, which is a slightly more expensive proposition, doesn't have a screen, it's effectively like the PS Vita. Right. That will come with the controller. But the Shield controller is effectively a uh, Xbox Bluetooth. Controller. Well, it's an Xbox controller with um, horizontal um, 
thumb thumbsticks rather than the offset thumbsticks. So if you've got an Xbox One controller, you do not need to purchase it. Operates with zero latency. You do not need to purchase an additional controller for this. What's interesting to me is that using five gigahertz Wi-Fi, which you have to have if you want 1080p 60 frames per second, mm -hmm. I can access any game that I've got on my PC. And if they're not supported natively, you can add them yourself manually. Every single one of them will work on my tablet with zero latency, zero dropout at 60 frames per second. Yeah. <clears throat> what do you do? You add them into the GeForce experience and then they, it runs from there? Precisely so. So I access them on my tablet through a UI. I say I want to play Mass Effect Andromeda mm -hmm. on my tablet. The tablet boots it up. I've then got it sitting there attached to um, you know, on my lap or on, on, a, uh, on a ledge or whatever else I want it on. I've got the controller in my hand and I can play Mass Effect for around four hours at 1080p, 60 frames, PC ultra settings. Now, I don't know any other portable device that can do that no, for $150. No. That's, That's unreal. So there's no, there's no like the Switch, there's no built-on controller option. So you always have to have it like on a kickstand and then use an Xbox One controller like if you're going to be using it portable. But you can plug it into your TV and get a 4K 30 frames per second, right? Yes, so it can output 4K 30 or 1080p 60. They're the, the two variants because it uses a mini HDMI to HDMI 2.0. Which, which struggles to, to do it. It doesn't have the HDCP 2.2 that it, that it needs to, to to run 64K. Uh, yeah. But you can actually buy third-party peripherals that will strap the Xbox controller to a tablet. I, I just you know can't promote them because it's not part of the product. It's a third-party peripheral that you want to buy. For me, it's the fact that I can play The Witcher 3 in PC Ultra at 60 frames per second when I'm around. Mass Effect works really well as a portable game, more so than a PC game. It, yeah. it, I've got that really? switch, that switch gamification of being able to pick up a game, play it on the go. I can I can save the game and stop the game from my tablet. Uh, I can play from different Wi-Fi hotspots, providing it's five gigahertz and consistent, and my desktop's on at home. That's all game stream. Then there's a second really great option, which is for people that are less of a hardcore gamer or people that just want a, a secondary streaming option. And this is GeForce Now. This is the Netflix of gaming. So... It's eight, uh, I think eight or nine dollars a month, and what that will do is let you stream from a GeForce GTX 1080 in the cloud onto the tablet, and the tablet can be connected to your TV or play natively on the screen. Mm -hmm. So you can play any game that's in their library indefinitely, much like PlayStation now or Netflix, on a tablet 1080p. Did you give this a shot? It's I crazy. did because the, the first month is free and they've got some good titles on there. It's a limited library. I've tried systems like this, Gary, and I was very unhappy with them just because of the latency in the controls, right? It's because yeah. Yeah. the video is getting streamed from this you know, server farm and then my inputs have to go back to that server farm and then that video signal with my input translated has to come back to me, right? And it... For some games, yeah. it didn't make too much of a difference. I would imagine for like a game like Witcher Three, it wouldn't be too bad. Some of them, it but was for horrible anything though. With timing based, you know, anything, it was awful. Yeah. So this has approximate console-based latency. So very, very little latency. It's not, you know, 144 hertz tick rate. It's console tick rate, so maybe 30 hertz tick rate on a 60 hertz game. It's imperceptible latency, and the reason that they achieved this is because. They, you know, NVIDIA are quite unapologetic in saying that you need a 50 meg consistent download speed to, to support this connection. Mm -hmm. So if you don't have 50 meg down, you, the service isn't for you. But for someone who doesn't want to shell out a lot of money purchasing a PS4 or a GTX PC, and they just want to play the odd game here and there, and they've got $10 a month, and they want a tablet anyway, buy this. You've got yeah. a media streaming That's an incredible box. value, actually. If it works as good as you say, I think I might pick one of these up because... Uh, I, I've tried things like this and had a lot of mm. issues with them. I I do have uh, a box in my living room, a stream box, uh, a steam box, sorry. I, I don't even know what it's called yep. anymore. But <laughs> to get that thing working on Wi-Fi, no, nah, it's not working. It's got to yeah. be wired. So I'm surprised that you're able to get a, a tablet to work as well as you're saying. Like, I have yep. decent Wi-Fi. I have a you know a Nighthawk router that cost me a fair fair good but Is that amount the, of money. I I'm on the X6 AC3200 Nighthawk, so if that's the same thing you've got. I don't, I don't got, remember that. Yeah. Mine's a few years old now. I think it's an AC1900, actually. So it's a, it's right. a few years mm -hmm. old now. Mm -hmm. But it's, it does have 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi. But I've mm -hmm. tried things like the PlayStation Vita using remote play off of PlayStation 4. 
Uh, the PlayStation 4 was hardwired to the router, but the PlayStation Vita obviously can't be. I tried the PlayStation Vita TV. Again, over Wi-Fi, it, it, it just was not a satisfactory game experience. It did work okay if it was wired uh, both ends. But, yeah, I'm, I, I'm, yeah. I'm glad to hear that it, this thing works better over Wi-Fi. But it may be your, your mileage may vary depending on how good your Wi-Fi is, too. Right, and how to good al- the signal strength is, too. That's a big yeah. To alleviate some Vita concerns there, I've also got um, the Vita Slim and the original. Mm-hmm. I tried both of those, and I tried my mobile phone on a 5 gigahertz connection remote playing that. All of them broke up at 1080p60. You know, when you get the little PS4 connection box and it kind of stutters and mm-hmm. pixelates? Yeah. Um, all of them broke up on a PS4 signal. For some reason, the PC one holds it steady. It could be that the source that it's streaming from has a stronger upload. A PC may be able to render better. I mean, my GPU yeah. load is only 60% at 1080p Ultra, um, 60. So, you know, my, mileage may well vary. But I, my takeaway from this is if you've got a 9, it actually works on anyone with a 650 or above graphics card. But if you've got a 9 series or above GeForce, don't even think about it. This is 2015 tech, so it's starting to um, go out of production in places it's difficult to find the second hand ones are selling for more than the new ones uh, because you can't find the new ones so that you know amazon have got uh, tertiary market ones on there for about 180 190 dollars the, these things are, are really desirable um content pieces of hardware and uh, the final note that i told you guys but the, the viewers may be interested in is the reason that we won't see a i guess a successor to this tablet is unfortunately because of the partnership that nvidia have signed with um, nintendo so the nintendo switch uses the tegra x1 chip which is the successor to the k1 chip used in yep. this tablet and nvidia have, have almost said in a gentleman's agreement that they won't be pursuing any revisions to the tablet because it will be a direct competitor to the, to the switch. Uh, nintendo switch it's so, so not though like if you really think about it i mean this thing is yeah. an accessory for a pc Right. Yeah, it's it totally. Is. I think it's different enough too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is, but Although, it's it, with a game streaming service, you technically don't have to have a PC. No, it's it's set up so that the media box, which they're promoting now, is designed to be a living room box that's a 4K media player that also is great at games and gives you a real controller. This thing plays all the Android games. So if you're playing Half Life Two or Borderlands Two, the Android versions, all of those play on it natively with no need to be connected to the internet. So it's got capability to play games in isolation as well as the ones that you stream it's it's just i can't help evangelize about it i promise you geforce are not paying me i wish they would but for 150 dollars i really want Wait, to stream right right here. if you're listening <laughs> well, well, no sponsorship we'll just, just 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 hint hint we'll yeah. just leave it at this gary by the first three minutes briar was already at the website so i think that you're doing pretty good <laughs> i've been he at the there. website ever since he started talking about it in our, in our uh Twitter on chat. Twitter. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I've been hovering on that website all week. Yeah. I Gary mean, costs some... me a lot of money, if you guys don't know. Gary, <laughs> since I've known him, Gary's an expensive he has cost man. me sure a has. lot of money. <laughs> sure and, I'm, has. and I'm working on a Zim 4 at the moment. So if anyone watching this wants to tweet Briar pictures of Zim 4, then yeah, that works too. Please, um, man. Uh, Beastly, what have you been playing? Uh, I've been playing what I've been, I guess kind of getting back into i've got an old backlog that i've been kind of staying away from and i've recently got into final fantasy 15 oh hey Ooh. hey <laughs> there you go yeah let, let's final hear fantasy all of that fan yes. right here let's yeah. let's get it all out of the way there you go i've Who's only that? gotten probably about four to five hours in but i'm loving it god uh it really kind of pisses me off i had the game as long as i did uh horizon came along and i stepped away i kind of stepped away from resident evil 7 uh, to, to play Horizon, so now Resident Evil has to be played as well. i got to finish that. But it really is the dream that I've had for years of actually playing, um, I guess, what we would consider a CG-quality Final Fantasy game. That was kind of the dream back in the days of Final Fantasy VII, VIII, and IX, to actually play a game that looked as good as the CG, and now we, we're actually there. I've always stayed away from kind of the Let's Plays and people, you know, revealing videos i didn't want to know anything about the story of noctis and what was going on other than the i guess the kind of prequel information that was uh, revealed during the early i guess trailer playable teasers that was released by uh, square uh but yeah it really is amazing it's a beautiful game i think i'm going to love it a lot me and my wife started playing it together uh side by side on 4k tvs it's one of the best looking 
games I played in a long time. Oh, it's probably it's, it's probably the best looking RPG I played, exclusive traditional Japanese type of RPG, and it's a beautiful game. I haven't gotten far enough to to really give it my you know my beastly gamer stamp of approval. But I'm very happy that I started it. It's a beautiful game. I think that the 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 way that you you fight enemies versus the old school way of turn based uh, attacks is really incredible. It's a huge open world, something that you would just never expect them to be able to render uh, at this quality. And have I'm, they made I'm, any changes to this game since it came out? Because when it came out, there were some significant complaints. Oh uh, well, I don't. I didn't play when it first came yeah. out, Briar. So I mean, you I've been, been waiting. Following it at all? No, I, I stayed away from it. I, I think I bought the game probably about three months ago, guys. And yeah. when I bought it, I didn't play it at all because something else was kind of at the, the front of the burner at that time. Uh, but as time progressed and as things moved to the side, like Horizon Zero Dawn, we talked about it. I talked to my significant other, and she said, well, the game that we need to play now is Final Fantasy XV. We both been wanting to play it, and we both started it. It's a beautiful game. Uh, the game looks as good as a cutscene. And uh, that's a good start. And the story looks like it's very deep and involved. The only the issue is, right, I got five kids. I got all this stuff going on. And I'm like, oh, my God, this is going to take 100 hours. So put that with my career and my family. We're talking 500 hours <laughs> because it's really hard for me to just come home, walk past a newborn, walk past two little girls, and go straight to Final Fantasy. So I've really had to, you know, consider Jumping into this, and I think uh, I'm going see. To, this uh, is where you put the kids up for sale on eBay. Solve all your problems. <laughs> Easy that's way what, out. That's what Briar would have done. He would have done it a long time money. ago. He's let's like, be honest. Like, basically, you're, already, <laughs> you're looking short term there, Robbie. What you got to do is you got to get them out working. <laughs> ah, <laughs> bringing in that money on a day to day go. visit. You know, yeah, I mean, they're, they're if only you kill the cow for the meat, Robbie, you you eat for a day or a week or a month. If you milk that cow every day, man, you eat for years. There you this go. Is, That's a, a very well said, well said Basically, way. Basically, man, yeah. be honest, you got as far as Cindy, didn't you? And then that was where your gameplay ended. You just saw... <laughs> no! I saw saw yeah, Cindy in the shorts and was like, yeah, this, this is where I'm gonna, this is my game now. <laughs> this is pretty <laughs> nice. Cindy, I like Cindy, this. Cindy's fun to look at, but I can't stand her voice. Sorry. But yeah, I mean, I've, I've gotten considerably past that. But yeah, I mean, it's it's pretty. It's an incredible game. I think I, I'm going to stick with it and enjoy it and play it. I also played some more Tomb Raider because I wanted to uh, finish that game. I played it on the PC, and I'm not a PC player, so it's really hard for me to chat right now. Glad a real Final Fantasy fan can finally get around to playing it. You're welcome. Uh, I, I played some Final Fantasy. I mean, not Final Fantasy. Some Tomb Raider, Rise of the Tomb Raider, and I've really been enjoying that on my PS4 Pro and experiencing it almost at PC levels on the pro and I'm just trying to like delegate and jump back and forth between the two it's been a little hard I, I'm not 15 anymore you know when you're close to 40 you got a big family you got to kind of pick your shots but I promise I'm going to stick with it I'm going to do it okay I promise I am it's a, a Final Fantasy fan yeah, yeah thank you did you, you put any Robbie? more game have you put any more time into Zelda PC? I was wondering if you just kind of bounced off of Zelda <laughs> you know <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know you, no, I haven't played any more Ghost Recon. Me and my Time wife talked about Ghost Recon. My wife Zero and I hours. talked about it. Look, my wife Here is farther go. than I am in the Legend of Zelda now because uh, she didn't know that multiple accounts can be created on the Switch. Uh, and when she created her account, somehow <laughs> mine. <laughs> it's such a nefarious. I remember laugh. actually as soon as, yeah. as soon as you started telling that story, I remember you tweeted about laugh. it. It's so easy. <laughs> All right, so. When my wife created her account, somehow my account got deleted uh, from from, Aww, uh, let's say, man. from my sucks. Switch. Totally. Completely gone. And I would put probably close to 15 hours into the game. I had to completely restart. And, of course, Gary had to call me out and say, what, three hearts? What the fuck are you doing, Beasley? I was like, <laughs> my shit got deleted. God damn it, Gary. <laughs> Give me a break. Okay? I like the fact Beasley didn't want to tell us that. He sent us a nice little screenshot to the group and was like, hey, guys, look at me at work playing Zelda. Looked at it and was like, <laughs> yeah, look how far I am Zelda guy. Three hearts in a linen shirt. The shit have you been doing for four hours? Like, <laughs> <laughs> it was a nightmare, okay? It was but, really hard to get out of that, that first chamber, the, the res chamber. Really yeah. tough puzzle. Yeah, so Thanks difficult. 
<laughs> and that's my week of gaming. But I'm, I'm guessing for the next week, I'm going to be doing Final Fantasy 15 so that I can get this monkey off my back. That is my friends and family calling me a, a Final Fantasy fan. <laughs> I'm so sick of that shit. <laughs> Bobby, what have you been up to? We're not sick of it. It's still so fun. I'm sure you're uh, not, Bobby. <laughs> <laughs> this week, I've been playing a bit of Destiny. I have been kind of casually getting back into it. And while I'm enjoying it, I am. I just have the feeling I'm like I'm so ready for Destiny too at this point. I really am. Like mm -hmm. Destiny's a fantastic game, one of my favorite shooters of all time. Have you been doing the, this... new, the newly redone raids or the revamp? No, raids? I haven't even played any of them yet. I just yeah. haven't gotten anyone into that. But I've been enjoying the game. Just been playing it, and but I really am ready for Destiny two at this point. Cannot wait for that game to come out. Well, what so. what are you doing? If you're not doing the raids, I'm a little curious. Been doing strikes, been doing the story playlist, uh, been doing some crucible. That's been about it. Those three things. So okay. yeah. And I like that my story playlist. I, I have one problem with it. They they added this story playlist with Age of Triumph where they added like nightfall modifiers and stuff to story missions, uh, which kind of makes them a little bit more fun, a little more challenging. Uh, yeah. But it's not actually a playlist. Like you go into it and it just boots you out to the director. That's annoying. Yeah, it. I agree. As I wish it would just to the keep strike going. playlist, which will just load you into the next strike, which I would prefer. Uh, Me so too. It's a little, a little weird. I wonder if it's a bug. Actually, I wonder if they'll fix it in an update. Yeah, they could if enough people ask about it. Maybe. Yeah. Well, yeah. Well, I've All been right. playing a lot of Destiny too. Uh, Vault of Glass, uh, the revamp version. You said of Destiny too. Destiny too. Yeah, I've been as well. <laughs> on top of that, Stream as well. I was Stream about to say, you've been playing Destiny 2? <laughs> oh my god. I've been playing oh a lot god. of Destiny as well. <laughs> um, Thank you for the Vault of point. Glass came back, you know, the newly revamped Vault of Glass came back, and uh, it has really re reignited a lot of people's interest in raiding and PvE in Destiny, which has been a lot of fun to see and uh, be a part of. They changed or they added some challenge modes to the Vault of Glass to. Uh, mix things up a little bit. One of them is uh, in the Templar section, and the second one is uh, versus Atheon at the very end. And the Atheon one is really interesting because everybody has to be on their game and everybody has to be doing stuff uh, all at once. And it just makes for a really fun and cooperative environment, which I've been really enjoying. All the new gear that's coming out of the new raids, too, is really fun to get. They, they give you... It's nice because they give you the exotic weapons pretty much right away, right? Like your first few times through the raid, you're going to have every exotic weapon. But the the legendary stuff in the armor is much harder to get. It's lower stream coming. So there's there's a reason to go back and like this week, there was a reason to go back and do Crota's End, uh, which was the featured raid last week. Even though there's no challenge modes, you can still get legendary gear out of it. And next week, when King's Fall releases, there'll still be a reason to go back and do Vault of Glass from this week and, and Crota's End. And then when Wrath of the Machine comes out, like it's, there's going to be basically four active raids that you're just going to want to cycle through to get all the available loot out of, which oh, is insane. Yeah. Like If you just think about it, like a an hours in Destiny tally to, to do all of the things that you could do on a weekly basis is going to be... Pretty much unattainable for people who put eight hours a day into Destiny. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it's been fun. I'm really enjoying uh, the Age of Triumph. It's a better, it's a better update to the game than I really expected it to be c coming into it. Like I expected to uh, be happy to go back into those raids, but I'm, I'm actually having more fun with it than I expected to. Part partially just because so many people want to do raids again. Uh, that that's made it a lot of fun. Me and Gary ran a raid on Friday. That was a lot of fun. Um, it's yeah, it's just been a lot of fun. I am definitely looking forward to Destiny too, though, Robbie. Like, yeah, it, that is, you know, it, Destiny's been well, around for three years, and it's def definitely time for the it, sequel. Is it going to be hard 100%. at all for you, Briar? Do you think to walk away from Destiny, all the things that you've done there, and all the the worlds of you that you, you've explored? Do you think it'll be hard for you to just walk away no. clean and go to Destiny too? No, because no? this no. is a Completely sequel. <laughs> I can't wait, man. I can't it's wait. It's going to be better. Bigger and better. Yeah. Uh, the gameplay I, reveals uh, on May 18th, and I'm really looking forward to that. It's like your wife that you love getting the boob job. Okay. Got you. Completely sure. <laughs> okay. I mean, Fantastic. really, you still love her, but you probably love her a little bit more. Something, <laughs> little, something oh, yeah. new. Oh, yeah. my God. I know. Those things right. just can't get out of your face. We got some big news everywhere. this week, and I really want to talk about it. So... 
I hope Robbie. the Scorpio is at the top of the list because God Robbie, damn, of course he didn't that, that news is hot. Uh, Fine, I'm gonna start <laughs> I want to I wanna talk Can about Saints Row developer Volition. Can we can we get to the real news here? Scorpio! I'm just ordering it from when it came out to... I hate you guys. Gary is a fool, man. It's just an order, you asshole. Shut up. <laughs> we'll go Scorpio first, though. I'm totally into that. So, you guys ready? All right. We'll get through oh, it. I am ready, get Robbie. Saints Row ready. stuff. Don't worry. I'm, I'm hyped, too. This. All right. A Digital Foundry reveal of Project Scorpio this week has confirmed a lot of long-rumored speculation about the upcoming console. Notable specs include 12 gigabytes of GDDR5 RAM, which is significant because that's four more gigabytes four than the more. Xbox One, and it's way more powerful RAM. Uh, a memory bandwidth of 326 megabytes a second, that's very significant as well. And there's also going to be a vapor sort of cooling, cooling tech technology now. with the CPU and GPU. It's very vapor similar tamper. to how high-end video cards. Like yeah. gaming <laughs> Basically. And then the final thing to note is even without specific Xbox Scorpio patches, the console will run a majority of games at a higher resolution, frame rate, and overall better performance than the Xbox One. Right, before or we the kick PS4 off, Pro, from, from what I understand. Before we kick off, for those of you playing the drinking game along with me at home, um, Digital Foundry has just been mentioned, so raise your glasses. Um, <laughs> drink. I already um, finished my beer, go. but all right. <laughs> All right, we may continue. I think that's actually a pretty uh, stunning a part great of this. Game. Is that yeah, it is a good game. <laughs> is that <laughs> it's amazing that Microsoft chose Digital Foundry right? to kind of yeah. release the news, release the specs of the of the Xbox Scorpio. I thought that was pretty interesting. Is that instead of going to you know like a big gaming outlet like IGN outlet, yeah. or GameSpot, you know they chose. Somebody who who's very well respected when it comes to hardware specs and technology. Yeah. Digital Foundry is the top of that heap. Which when I it think, comes to, I think shows a little bit of pride in in Microsoft side. Is like, hey, yes. not only do we have something that we want to show you, but we're pretty fucking positive that you want to yes. see it. You know, like this we're is, proud of our hardware. This thing is this badass, is... and and these guys who tell you if stuff is crappy or good, they're gonna tell you it's badass too. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, it, to, to me, it's one of the biggest and proudest moments for me, uh, at least this console generation, because Digital Foundry, if something is not right as far as frame rate or spec, they will tell you in a heartbeat. Oh, yeah. Everything they've They'll said about the Xbox that. Scorpio, as far as the revealed specs for what this thing is actually going to be, has been very, very good and very positive. So the fact that Richard Ledbetter actually went there with Microsoft and, and was at this event and saw all this confirmed information lets you know that Microsoft is like, they're serious when they say this is the most powerful console of all time. The most beautiful this pixels is. ever. No. I mean, on a console. <laughs> they're, because, winning with, they're winning I mean, with pixels. PC, I mean... <laughs> This is the thing, right? This is really approaching, from what we understand with the Xbox codename Scorpio, it's approaching what modern uh, PC gaming, I guess, the top of the heap would be. You know, when it comes to console gaming, this is completely blown out of the water, everything we've seen. But this is actually a home console that's as powerful as most modern PCs, or at least close to that. High-end-ish PCs, yeah. yeah. It's pretty high-end, especially for console. Like, this is ridiculous. Absolutely so they, they've shown a lot of pride. They've shown a lot of poise and just, you know, going to, a, a, I guess, uh, an outlet kind of like Digital Foundry versus an IGN or a GameStop. I mean, you mentioned that this is on par or up there with some of the best PCs. If you believe what they've said about the spec and the performance and what the, the components can actually do. Do you not believe it? Just curious. Well, it's we've seen like it in a tech demo. The line. It's can we let Gary finish end. his sentence, please? What I was going to say that the, <laughs> the that's absolutely fine. The coefficient of how they've got this this hardware to work and the components to work, the six teraflops, and I think that's why they invited Ledbetter in, was that the six teraflops are not indicative of what the performance will be. Nothing at six teraflops is doing 4K 60 frames per second. At it's ultra everything settings. else in addition to it. it nothing what, is doing that. What we're going to be seeing is the equivalent of Xbox One graphical settings just. Up res to 4K, or not up res, but running at 4K, right? Okay. So be on a 4K, PC, yeah. those settings would be more like medium. Okay. That's I mean, we've seen a screenshot of, of Forza, which looked Forza Three. Which, oh my God! It looked, it looked pretty good for fantastic. a medium. Yeah, so I mean, right, say. Right. I just, I, I I think that it's, it's optimized. You know, this software is designed to run on yeah. this particular configuration of hardware. 
the coefficient of what they've got out of it when you read everything the digital foundry said is that it's comparable to possibly a 1070 or above in terms of what it's outputting that's pretty so, high. Which is impressive totally right. that's yeah. very good that's incredible for a console that is that really is scary good. power when it comes to a console. But the thing is, right, when we were looking at games like Forza 3, when it was up res to 4K running at 60 frames per second, it was still using only 68% of the CPU and GPU power of yep. the Scorpio. So it's capable of doing so much more Not than that. said they got 4K. that running in it like two days, too. Yeah, yeah two days. They ported guys. it over to the – I'm saying they, they ported it over within two days. They were able to get it at 4K native resolution, running at 60 frames per second, and with no hiccups, no issues, and it were still only using 68% of the, the system's GPU and CPU. That's fucking awesome. That's kind that of scary. Awesome. And and yeah. honestly, if they can get third-party developers to just do visual flourishes for the Xbox Scorpio. Well, that's the that's, thing, right, is the software. As we see this yeah. one game, they've, they've only shown us one game. It's a, one you game. Know, it's a right. Forza. It's Forza. It's a Microsoft game, right? And it's, it's a very a limited Microsoft look at Studios it. At the, yeah. yeah. What I want to see is I want to see how third-party games that are multi-platform run on this thing. I want to see, you know, you know that first-party games, like internally designed first-party games that only run on Xbox One. Are going to be insane. Oh, my God. They're going to look phenomenal, yeah. right? No doubt. They're going to be able yeah. to fully take advantage of this thing down to the hardware uh, as opposed to something that's got to also take into account uh, you know, the PS4 and the Xbox One and, you know, I Pro, although I would assume yeah. that any game that comes out for the Scorpio is also going to run on the Xbox One. It'll yeah. just run better and look gooder. Yeah, it has to. <laughs> look gooder. I mean, the, like much that. gooder. Much five, gooder. One of the five design columns of the Scorpio, which is smart because the PS4 didn't really have any design principles. They just said, hey, the PS4 Pro is a, is a really solid PS4. When Phil uh, has gone out there and, and said, "Hey, this is the this is the Scorpio. These are the things it does." One of the pillars is to rebuild developer confidence and get exclusives back on the Xbox and get developers gotcha. working for the Xbox again. So I think they're aware that this is a long term shot. This isn't a 2017 2018 plan. This is a plan through 2020 to get exclusives and big games back on Xbox hardware. So I think I think they're smart in what they're doing. That's what they need to do to be competitive right now. Because when I look at this box, I think to myself. Depending on the price, I'm, I'm buying one because of what I do and because of who I am. I'm a nerd. I run a YouTube gaming Absolutely. channel. I'm, I'm yeah. buying one, right? Uh, yeah, we'd love to. When I look at this box, to me, the success of it is really going to be determined by what games they announced for it at E3, but also the price. I mean, if this thing You're comes out at $700, seven. well, that's what Digital Foundries is saying, right? 500 Five bucks. and 700 uh, yep. If this thing comes out at seven hundred bucks, though, like you can get a pretty damn decent gaming PC, PC at that price. That could yeah, do more. Seven hundred dollars. I think and this the thing way, is dead. The way the Microsoft ecosystem is working right now is most of the exclusives that come They're out on, on the Xbox also come out on PC. Plus, you have access to this whole other library of PC games. Ooh, so to that's me, really. I mean, it's really... hard to justify really buying an Xbox at seven hundred dollars if you could buy a PC. For about that price point. No, it's not going to be a high end PC, but you could definitely. Yeah. Let me let me ask PC. you a question, Briar. Do you think that uh, Microsoft should pull back their whole PC Xbox One initiative when it comes to the Scorpio? Because you just brought up a really valid point. Uh, a lot of people could spend probably comparable amounts of money, get a pretty decent gaming PC, and play games on a PC at Xbox One or Scorpio levels for about that price. Do you think they should go move back towards? console exclusivity or do you think that the whole console pc exclusivity deal that they've got going with windows 10 vc it makes sense to me beastly that they that they do it but that's at a price point of like three hundred dollars for an xbox one yeah and the pc is you know a thousand dollars plus where you know like hey you know i got an xbox in my living room and i got a pc up in my office and if i buy gears of war 4 i can play it in either place it doesn't really matter uh, and both gaming experiences are good you release a, an Xbox One at seven hundred dollars, and that price fucking thing is like, yeah, yeah that's dead in the water. That's that you know? price. That's dead in and the water. To be fair, we're probably overstating the Play Anywhere initiative because the Play Anywhere initiative is currently working on nine games, three of which I'd consider to be AAA, you know, big releases, and it's only scheduled for about another six games um, that are on release schedule. 
Additionally, for a Play Anywhere game to work, you have to purchase the license digitally on the Windows Store or the Xbox Store, which is the most expensive way to buy it. So I recently wanted to purchase Gears of War 4 to play it on the PC and have a Play Anywhere version. If I buy it on the Xbox, uh, Xbox One physically in my local GameStop or UK game, mm-hmm. it's $20 equivalent. If I buy it on the store, it's $60 equivalent still. So there's oh, a wow. severe premium in that. Yeah. You know, so, so they, they the, triple the hidden price. Cost. Well, they, it's not triple. It's it's what it was at release. Is, it, is yeah. the PC version only available through the Microsoft Store, though? Yes. So it's the only way to play it on PC is to sp- still spend $60. I, I, don't, yep. I don't imagine you're going to be able to find a retail copy of that around, right? Uh, not on the PC. No, it wasn't ever released no. retail. It was released retail on the Xbox. It's not a PC game. It's accessible on the PC through Xbox Play Anywhere. Play Anywhere so, Initiative Windows 10. Okay, wow. Yeah, it's very, very limited. This isn't, hey, you can play any Xbox game. It's a subset. I think yeah. it's hey, some of Halo, Gears of War 4, Gears of War Ultimate Edition, and then there's you know some of the driving games and some other things. But it's not... All Forza, the games. okay. Well, I didn't know that. Thank you, Gary. Wow. Yeah, I just very, don't want you guys to think it's everything. Yeah, I was thinking it was completely wide open. You can just do no. it the same way you can do it through Steam. No, obviously not. Thank you. Wow. So before we move on, Destiny, Scorpio, Briar, what are you thinking now about your Xbox character? Is this now going to be your premier console or are you still looking at the PS4 for the Xbox? I don't see how it could be, Gary. You know, even if I buy an Xbox One and it's as powerful as you know, two PlayStation 4s duct taped together. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, the PC is still going to blow it out of the water, right? Yeah. So, so nothing Xbox that way, can do there. right I don't now, know. I games. honestly don't know. I mean, I'll probably buy an Xbox. I'll buy the Xbox Scorpio, and I'll probably put a character on there solely because I want to play with other players on the Xbox, right? right. That's the only reason I'll be playing on the Xbox. Still, yeah. But the PlayStation is still going to offer... Um, exclusive content. Yeah, exclusive yeah. content. And the PC is still going to be the most beautiful experience, assuming that Hopefully. it gets a good port. It could be a bad yeah. port, and that blows out my plan altogether. Who knows? I'm just Arkham, thinking with the Arkham Scorpio, Knight. you've got a guaranteed player base, whereas the PC, you have a potential player base that's untested at the moment. Yeah. So at least you've got True. the better of the two consoles. No exclusives, I mean, but I'm, a player base. There's no way I'm not buying this for all three, right? Like I'm, I'm buying the game on all three consoles. Yeah, you know. So it's if I if I was an Xbox One player right now, and I also had a PlayStation and a PC, and I was just playing, I went buying one copy of Destiny. I would just go with where are my friends playing, you know? Because that's right. that's really the best part about Destiny is playing with your friends. One hundred percent. Cool. Or the only way to play Destiny, in my opinion. All right, Robbie, what do we got next? Uh, well, you guys are going to get mad at me. Do you want me to go in order of the news, or what do you want me to just do? Just go, Robbie. Just, just all right. zip, it, zip it up and Imagine go. this, Robbie. Imagine a world where we all have limited time and limited attention spans. <laughs> okay. What do you think is going to be the best story? <laughs> I don't know. I'm cause... thinking about it right now, Briar. This is like making the, the news even more juicy <laughs> for me. <laughs> I want to see we'll do it live. We we'll will do it live, do it guys. Live. We'll do it live. I'm just going to do it in order, and if we'll take as much time as we want. All right, next game from Saints Row developer Volition, known as Agents of Mayhem, will be released August 15th for PS4, Xbox One, and PC. And I'll say, when this game was announced last year, I did not think it looked very fun. I was not interested in it. This is besides not a Saints Row game? Saints well, it's Row's a spiritual successor. Fun. Kind of. It's a similar game. Now it looks a lot better, though, I have to say. It does look fun it does. and goofy. It looks and, pretty fun. Yeah. It's, it looks like Saints, Saints Row now. Um, and I think that Saints Row is one of the funnest open-world kind of GTA spin-off type of genres that you can yeah, get into. They're really fun. It, it really I mean, looks like that now. Do you not think that Saints Row is a little bit dated in its presentation, though? And I don't mean graphically. I just mean it's humor. Yeah. I, I sure can agree. I can I agree. agree with you there. Yeah. I you can agree with you there. Why people with dildos? What's wrong with you? Black people with dildos? What kind of racist shit? I didn't say black people. I said people with wow. dildos. Oh, whoa! Oh my god! Oh, somebody knows, had this guy Robbie. Pepsi, man. Someone Jesus. heard that so wrong. <laughs> yeah, just you know things like you know Duke Nukem, for example, that were really great games. Like, really oh, that brash, came out of corny humor. humor. Oh my god! 
but at the time it was really relevant people used to you know chuckle to it it was very teenage boy humor and then duke newton forever came out and people were like god this is shit like yeah. nothing's funny in it so you know do you think the sense of yeah. humor is going to mature in volition you know in no, the old game? duke newcombs were great yeah i mean forever that's what i meant it's stupid humor yeah um god i have no idea i mean i think i also think that august 15th is a good release time frame for this game because nothing else that I really know of is coming out in August, and that's good, you know, get away from the big games in October, November. So it could be cool. I mean, I'm looking forward to it because it's the Saints Row guys. I don't know. Well, I guess we'll just see what happens when it, when it actually comes out. You yeah. know, I'm Can't neither here nor there in Saints Row. I got a lot of anticipation Row. going right now. <laughs> yeah, I know. Can't honestly like, say I get like, like a fairy <laughs> flying around your head? Yeah, all right. What do we got next, Bobby? <laughs> All right. Earlier this week, Marvel Vice President Ryan Penagos stated that Insomniac Games Spider-Man for PS4 would be released by the end of this year. This was later commented on by Insomniac Games, stating that, quote, no release time frame has been announced at this time, end quote. So this basically yeah. means it could come out at the end of 2017. They're saying we haven't announced a date, though. So the out news here is with, we don't know when Spider-Man is coming out. <laughs> Basically, yeah. Beastly Dogs, Beastly yes. Dogs yeah, episode one fifty. Just so you remember, we so when you go back and say, and we're, we're at episode five hundred now. I remember one fifty was the one where they didn't know what was going on with the Spider Man game. <laughs> that was one fifty. Like, we're coming out in so, twenty seventeen. It's on me. It's like, no, we're not. Shut up. Why did you say that? Yeah, I, th I think it is. It's, we're going to see it this year. It's coming out this year. It's going to come out probably within sixty days of the movie. I can exactly. imagine with the movie, right? They can't not miss that. Like, it's going you know? to be right around that. I want that game. Getting, I want that game to come out. Spider-Man games be can be really fun. It's that one looks really great. cool, and I love Insomniac uh, cool too. I think this will be good. This will be. Yeah, good. Uh, I think. It's did you ever play? Did you ever play Windlands, um, Briar, in VR? Windlands. No. Oh, maybe I did. Is that PS4? Ooh. PS4 and Oculus and. Um, yeah, I think I did. Yeah. Five. So you, love, you've got Spider-Man sort of powers. That's the only reason I bring it up is you're shooting um, grappling nah, hooks and webs and swinging. It. Try it out if you really what's, want the fantasy the of, of Spider-Man. Windlands, one word. Windlands, okay, because Briar excited me. He said, no. Oh, I was like, oh, I got to try that shit. All right. <laughs> it's super right, cheap, Windlands. but try it out. If you really want the Spider-Man fantasy and you can't go to wait until... It is on PS4, I think. But mm. it is PS4 and it's yeah. um, vibe, but you don't get the, the move controllers on PS4. It's controller-based, but yeah, okay. try it out. All right, Robbie, what do you got next? Sorry, something was distracting me. Uh, Sanga, Stop watching porn on your side. I, I thought they no, discontinued the Snap. Didn't, they, didn't Xbox discontinue Snap? You can't have Snapped ass in the corner. We're doing the live show. Come on. I'm just going to ignore you now. Unbelievable. <laughs> okay. Sega has released a countdown timer this week for a reveal of something Bayonetta. Bayonetta. Oh, yeah. It is God. unknown at this time whether the countdown will reveal a brand new game or a rumored PC. port for Bayonetta 2 on other platforms. Which would be really cool, man. Bayonetta well, 3, maybe? No, like countdown timer should not be a port. Is it a port? You think it's a port? It's got to be a port. The Wii U. How many people played it on the Wii U? About three. And Two if you people. look at it as well. I was it, one of the three. There, there you go. go. Beastly's one of the three. And it, it was the greatest experience of that year because, Gary, yeah. it was my fucking game of the year. Okay? Being it dropped my frames. Game of, the resolution was, a, was poor. It looked like the 360 version. You know what? You're a half, you know, you're a cup half empty guy. I'm a cup yeah. half fucking full. And it was amazing. I love really? the game, but let it have the hardware that it, it deserves. It was a let video game on. orgasm from another planet. It was amazing. Just tell the yeah. truth. Uh, I think let it play on the PS4 and Xbox One. Let it have the hardware it deserves. Oh, let it God. Have the that happened. Deserves. I would lose my mind. Yeah. Briar, I, I, I still need to sing you that game. I really have to sing you Bayonetta 2. It was totally amazing. But I, I, I did. Wii U shit game? What the fuck's going God on over damn here? damn it, Briar. Because <laughs> <laughs> it's only Wii U. Fucking Wii U hand me downs? What? what What's going How on here? Last gen, that man. was the main reason I didn't play it was because I was like, I just don't care about the Wii U. Like, I really just don't. <laughs> I couldn't find yeah, my Wii U in on. the basement. You, <laughs> Robbie, you bought The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild on the Wii U, so take that back. Because that was Zelda. I was not, there's no way I wasn't going to play that. That's I, I, I think that this could possibly be a PC port of the original Bayonetta. It's never come out on PC. 
I think that's what this is all about. I think really disappointing to, for a countdown. I think though. that's what that it was... is. I went Steam after this news and I downloaded the little 8-bit Bayonetta game. It's like a Mario type of experience. You're Bayonetta. You're shooting people with little projectiles. You, oh, yeah, for April Fool's. I, yeah. I downloaded it. It was, it was kind of fun. I played it for about 10 minutes. But I think it's really just a port. If they come out with news, Sega comes out with news, and it's like a Bayonetta 3, I think the whole world's going to stop. Because at this point in my life, Bayonetta is a huge franchise. I can't wait to see what they do with it next. Yeah, totally. All right, Hopefully then. It's not just a port, though. That would be kind of disappointing to me. I think that's what's going to happen. We'll see what happens, though. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Robbie, what's our next story? Totally, yeah. So if you guys remember back in, I want to say it was 2015, Activision Blizzard announced they were making a movie studio and they were going to make a Call of Duty film. Well, Activision Blizzard is currently developing a Marvel-style cinematic universe for the Call of Duty franchise with multiple films already in the works. <laughs> is this going to be any good, or are these just going to suck? Who fucking cares? It, Call of Duty is not about character development. Not anymore, anyway. It's not about a story. It's about shooting people online. Like, is... <laughs> it's weird. Yeah, right. I, I don't it's know right. how to feel about I, this. It's, it's... Do you know, I, I don't know. I'd, I'd probably take a different view on that, so... Let's the hear. games the games are completely about shooting people online and i think the worst games to films have been when they've tried to take the game and recreate the game in a cinematic experience if they take the essence of call of duty which is big epic set piece battles war with squads and, and characters that you should care about and put that into a cinematic universe I think something like that could be powerful. Look at Band of Brothers or something of that nature, especially if they tie this up. Ooh, what if Call instead of, of making World it World called Call of Duty, they just call it Band of Brothers? Oh, <laughs> I don't think. Work, or, or they could call it Black Hawk Dawn, Down. Or, <laughs> or <laughs> I mean, they could put any name on these movies because you're not going to be able to Saving recognize Private it as Call Ryan of Duty. Like, what, what could be in Private these Ryan movies? The what could be in these movies that you would recognize? Oh, that's fucking Call of Duty. Nothing but Call of Duty gets you to the cinema and puts you in the theater seat. I mean, so that's but that's just name. <laughs> yeah, name I think it's the shame is a what big part. Would it though? I mean, how? I mean, that's really a test that hasn't really been given. How many people will go to the movie theater just because there's a name Call of Duty on? You know, Five on the years doc ago, definitely now. Yeah, All right, now, I don't, I don't, what's now? the last video game movie you went and saw in a theater? Fuck, I've never. I didn't seen see. I didn't see Assassin's Creed because I, I I felt it in my heart it would be shit. Um. Honestly, Mortal Kombat. That was the last one I went and saw. The original? Like back in the 90s? Oh, yes. I remember the last one I saw. It was a year ago. The Ratchet and Clank movie. And that was really underwhelming. It was okay. Yeah, I saw Mortal Not Kombat great. years ago and I turned my dad into a Mortal Kombat fan. He played against his ex-wife and Gary, they both what, were in Blue King. What, what was the last uh, video game movie you saw in the theater? I don't go to the theater much, but um, I think maybe Tomb Raider. One of the Tomb Raider movies, possibly. I don't know. I, I can see, you, you know what, what if they brought in the original Modern Warfare characters, like Ghost and like those really oh, iconic characters? And Soap and oh, wow. Captain Price. Yeah, they oh, can do man. that, maybe. Yeah, Even those guys are iconic, absolutely. Yeah. Or if they took oh, it the other God. way and, and went, made it more human, made it more grounded and realistic, and you looked at call of duty characters that you know the after effects of it and them reliving the the battles they've been through sort of ptsd story potentially i mean yeah. i don't know there's lots of different ways you could cut it something that Jeez. isn't just B kirk a... in the chat is saying are we all forgetting about the mario film <laughs> no we wanted to forget about that one what? no that is classic cinema man <laughs> i've never Sounds seen so it good. but obviously i've just You've never seen it robbie oh you got it robbie. awful no it's i so gotta see it terrible. though i it's want good. to it's like so fucking bad it goes you know how sometimes something can be so shitty that it it's actually becomes good. entertaining yeah. due to its pure fucking raw sewage it's like sharknado i think is a perfect example of this it's so bad yeah. that it just like it flips around and like it, the it becomes fun to watch just because it's crappy Street I Fighter, want to also see a good example of this. Terrible. Yeah. <laughs> There's entire documentaries that have been made on how bad the Super Mario <laughs> movies were, the, the pre-production. <laughs> Behind the scenes, the actors used to do shots just before they go on to their lines to get through that scene. So they have to go on and just down. I remember hearing it was such right. a nightmare filming it. Yeah, it was just awful. Yeah, I want to see it, definitely. They'd rewrite the morning before the set and go, guys, the lines you've just learned, forget them. Here's some new ones. So they just don't, <laughs> don't worry are about you, it. Are you serious? 
Yeah. Are you being, oh my God, I didn't know this. Oh my yeah, God. Yeah, there was um, there was a Bob Hoskins um, interview that he did years later, I think 18 years after the, the movie. I mean, rest in peace, Bob, now. But uh, they say to him, is there anything in your life that you regret? And he said, the Mario movie. Is there anything in your life <laughs> you change? The Mario yeah. movie. Is he said that he went called? to heaven. He went straight to heaven yeah, when he said that. Oh all the way through. Yeah, it stuck, it's stuck with him. Yeah. Boy, oh boy. All right, Robbie, what do we got next? All right, Legend of Zelda producer A.G. Aonuma, I hope I said that right, has you suggested did. this week that the open world structure found in Breath of the Wild will be the standard formula for the series going forward. Not a huge surprise, because people love, love, love that game. Absolutely love it. We all do. Well, people I, would think I don't, but I do. I do. You fucking hate Zelda. Anyway, um, <laughs> I, I think that... It goes back to its roots. When you go back to Zelda 1, you know, on Super Nintendo, A Link to the Past, it was an open world game. It just looked different. It was a different kind of experience, but it really was an open world type of game. And uh, I think that they're kind of going back to their roots, but in a new gen a new genre, a new generation with new hardware, and it just appears different. But I think that Zelda is kind of back to its roots now. That's my opinion. What do you guys think? I mean, yeah. clearly people like this formula, so he's dumb to ditch it right away right yeah, yeah. i mean I, I i think this totally. is probably one of the best i've ever played it's the, really incredible the mileage is infinite on that game so there's been talk about all the ways that zelda had failings all the areas they could have expanded more on the fact there wasn't enough differentiation in the shrines the dungeons uh, the world was a little bit too generic there was too much expanse with not enough to explore or to do there's there's been critiques that have been leveled against them so i think there's there's the ability to refine all of those things that they could do or building on that there's the ability for online co-op uh, or a dark souls style uh, world where you can invade other people's uh, game you know there's lots of different things you can do in an open world game well, that let me let me just say this gary hindsight's 2020 right i remember when you first started playing this game when briar first started playing this game it was nothing but high praise of course, when you look back at a game and you compare it with everything that exists, you can find little areas that can be improved. That's probably going to happen. Sometimes overall, a game is so good that you can respect its faults. You can see the yeah. faults, and they can be pointed out to you, and you just don't give a shit. Like, it's right. just so fucking good. You know what I'm saying? Just, Zelda is just one of drop the games. mic right now. Drop the mic. Where's the mic? Like The way that systems all interact in that game... And the way you just feel like you're exploring, like it's just, it's the combat is wonderful. It's very There's special. So it's a very it. special yeah. experience. Yeah. And, and not, you can, not you can just bitch that. about the frame rates. You can bitch about, you know, all sorts of different problems in that game because there are problems in it. But I mean, what ultimately they did it's make a very is something special magical. experience. Yeah. Uh, and not, not just that, Briar, right? Playing The Legend of Zelda, I can say without a doubt at this point, after putting probably close to 20 hours in, it's a, a, it's a better game than Horizon. And when I was playing Horizon, I was like, there's no way that The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild would be better than this. After playing it, yeah, and I'm not even close to even being complete and done with the game. I know beyond a shadow of a doubt it's a better game. It's a better experience overall. It might not look the same. It might not have the same visual aesthetic, right? But mm -hmm. I think that what they've done here is so special and so unique that when you look at it as a complete package, there's very few games that can stand up to it. There's very few experiences that can stand up to what they've done with this type of game. Well, completely. And, it's, it's my game of the generation. The reason that I brought up I guess the flaws that have been pointed out was that I agree um, with Ija and Numa that, that there's still lots and lots of mileage in this open world aspect. They shouldn't just ditch it after one game and, and right. try. There's, there's lots of areas they can innovate and create something that's still open world but feels very unique to that new game. So it makes sense to, to still do it. And, and, and not just that, though, Briar or Gary or Robbie. Uh, the fact that the game in itself is so, so expansive and, and so special... It, it becomes more special when you can take it from the TV on the go. There's really no other game that's this prestigious that you can just take from your TV and boom, all of a sudden it's in the palm of your hand. You're Not in for the us your owners. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> absolutely. I'm sorry, Robbie. Uh, it's but okay. For, but for, for the people who are playing it on the Switch, that's a very special thing to get to a certain point, to get to a boss, and then you pause the game. And you grab it out of the dock, you go into your, your bedroom, your wife is watching you know, Fox News or Lifetime, and you're next to her and you're continuing on from that point. It's a very special thing that not many times have I ever experienced. And that makes a game so prestigious even better 
in my opinion, the, the fact that you can take it on the go. I think Nintendo is like really on cloud nine with the game, not just so much with the game, but with the Switch experience in general. I think it's really, really special. It right, reminded me next? of. Oh, sorry. <laughs> ahead, what's what's no, no, I was saying, Boosie um, ignited something on me there, talking about games on the go that, that I've noticed with the Switch more broadly, forgetting Zelda for a moment, is that that aspect of taking it on the go, I noticed in my tablet, um, and I've also noticed on the Switch, I'm playing games that I wouldn't play on my PlayStation 4, or I wouldn't play anywhere else, simply because of the mobile aspect. It's almost wow. you know, something like Fire Emblem's Heroes or Pokemon Go, I'd never ever play on the PS4. I probably wouldn't have played Snake Pass, the game that, that I spoke around on the Switch, or World of Goo. I wouldn't sit down and buy that on the PS4, but I've got them both on the Switch. And I play them all the time because it's something I can pick up and play. I think the Switch and, and the, the Shield tablet, they're both ingenious in the fact that they make me want to play mobile games and different games, different genres, that I just wouldn't play on a traditional console. I don't know if you guys have had that same experience. Is it because it's a secondary experience to something else you're doing? Like you, you're not just focused on... The console? Partly that, yeah. I mean, I've been doing it while the other half's been watching TV. And like you say, I'm not 100% invested in the show she's watching. <laughs> or just that if I'm playing something on the train, you know, I don't want something that's really, really immersive and deep. I might be happy with a short puzzle game that yeah. I can just pick up and play between stops. And it's something that if I was sitting down here in front of my monitor or my 4K thing, I almost feel like I don't really want to be playing Stardew Valley which is what I've been playing on my tablet and absolutely loving, which is almost like an Animal Crossing or Farmville style game. I wouldn't play that on a big screen, but on a tablet or a portable, it suddenly becomes something that I'm really enjoying and I'm laying back on the sofa and I'm kind of invested in. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, a lot more. And the Switch hits that sweet spot of being a console that gets me playing these indie games and these games that I just wouldn't touch on a traditional console. And I don't know if, if it's just me. I just wanted to put that out and see if I you mean, guys... No, I have a similar experience with games like that. Is that. I can't remember the game it was on iPad, but it was like one of those tower defense games where you got to, you know... I would have never played that game on a PS4 or had it come out. I would have never played it on a computer. But because I was sitting on the couch, half paying attention to a television show, and could easily pause that game, you know, it was just fine to have, you know? It was just... Yep. Now, I'm, I'm hearing a lot of a lot of speculation out there. This is not our news, but they're saying that the, 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 the Nintendo Switch is going to be as popular as the Nintendo Wii. Do you guys think this is possible? You know, I mean, I know, I know a lot of people have been I buying doubt this it. thing. I highly doubt that. I mean, it's sold out. And you can't really find it anywhere. How can we really say you doubt it when it you can't really find it? just came out, though. Like, it has not been out long. And, you know like, the I Wii hope? was a runaway success. I what do you hope, Ryan? What do you I hope? hope? I hope that... I don't really care if it sells as much initially as the Wii, but I hope that it sells into the future better than the Wii did and that third-party games sell on it. That games, you know, it's it has, a, it has an attach rate for games because... The thing with Wii U's, it had Wii Sports. That's what everybody played, and then that's the, the only thing, thing got shoved into a, a you know, a drawer and Closet, never seen again. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You're right, Briar. I mean, I think this thing that's has more of a, more of a possibility because it has a possibility for third party games. It has a possibility for great first party games. It has more power than the Wii or the Wii U ever had. I think it's a great. I mean, honestly, man, I don't even want to tell you guys. I dropped my 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 Nintendo Switch last weekend. And oh, it fell oh. off of my dresser, fell off my dresser, and the controller popped off. And I was like, holy shit. I picked it up, I put the controller back on, but now the controller just kind of slides off without you pushing the button in the back. I was like, oh, no. I mean, I was at work, like, looking online. What could I do? How could I fix this? And then I did a little bit of research. The way Nintendo made the Switch is that the screen has metal screen metal on the side. And the controllers are plastic. So the controllers, if they get screwed up or something bad happens to them, you can replace them. The only time you ever have to replace the actual console is if the screen breaks or completely gets destroyed. So I was like, wow, I can just buy another cheap controller for 30 or 40 bucks. Cheap. They're not cheap. The Joy-Cons cheap are controller. not cheap. <laughs> Absolutely not. You really are well, rolling it over yeah. there, Beasley. Jeez, Beasley, you need to check the local The YouTube the channel has been blowing up, guys. Okay. You're not paid by them, are you? See, but, just um, check the local gas station, see if anyone's got any Joy-Cons yeah. in their coat. Hey. Yeah. Shady guy in the back, you got any Joy-Cons? Yeah, I, I could take I'm them in my truck. Get, 
I'm going to get some gas. A guy just pops open. You know, hey, I got that. Uh, it is. A, I actually think that's a design flaw, Beast. Hey, like you. That. You want some Joy Cons? The problem is, it's got a metal rail on it, but there's like a pin that holds the Joy Con on. That's just made out of very uh, fragile plastic. Plastic, and, yeah. and that's so it shears off, is. and then it, there's no. That's way that what, really... exactly what happened to me. Yeah. And so, like my it's right Joy Con just slides right off, and I was like, no. And so I took it to work, and my wife didn't know because my wife she bought it for me for my birthday. I didn't want to say, hey, look, it's my birthday. I turned 600 years old. I don't want you to know that I fucking dropped this shit. And I told her the next day, she's like, oh my god. I said, well, it's no problem. I'll just spend 60 bucks. There has enjoy. been another hardware failure that's been popping up with the switches that they're actually warping. Seriously? Yeah, they're yeah. warping. Oh, yeah, I heard it, about that. Is that real? Well, I was gonna, I was gonna keep talking about it. I'm sorry. No problem. <laughs> <laughs> uh, if Awkward. you play them in the dock quite a bit, apparently there's enough heat in there and there's enough pressure, like a bending force of pressure, that they're actually that the machine can actually warp the, and since it's got a plastic screen there's no real that's not good nothing really rigid holding it in shape so if it gets hot from just sitting in that dock apparently it could just start warping i don't know how widespread this is at this point but i've been seeing quite a few pictures on reddit and stuff about it yeah. the reports are that there's three I heard there's only like on, like two or three really uh, yeah the, the oh. reports unless you, you've seen more bro with three people and one of the guys has been keeping reddit updated with posts so he contacted Nintendo um, and told them and sent the pictures. And Nintendo have asked him to return the console. Uh, and the last update that he had is that they're repairing it. And in addition to repairing it, they're transferring all of his data onto the... Because apparently they, they can. So Nintendo have the ability to transfer data onto a console if it's repaired. Yeah, we don't. But we don't. So that they must be doing a hardware swap or you know a hard drive swap. I don't know what mm -hmm. it is. But it's just worth noting if anyone who's listened to the show is is got a bendy switch... Um, get in touch with Nintendo. <laughs> a bendy uh, switch. I yeah, love that. Apparently, they are honoring the uh, the manufacturer's warranty and, and actually working to get them replaced. So, wow. Oh, shit. Have you guys had any of these kind of issues with your switches? I don't have a switch. No. I wish I could whip my switch out, but I don't. Go. I haven't had any hardware issues with my switch. I'll be honest with you, though. I play with the Pro Controller. It sits in the dock. Um, I very rarely take it out. I just so no warping for you at all. No. Okay, well, it seems like it's probably an issue that's my new. I've probably played 20 best. hours on the thing so far, too. It's not like. And again, because of the internet, it could be like, you know, this might be a very minor problem that doesn't happen to many people, but it just seems so much more widespread it than be. it is. It could be, it could be, you know, like a one off, but I mean. It's still out there, though. There have been numerous hardware problems with the Switch. Early yeah, on. especially over time. Who knows? Like a year or two in, maybe it'll come up even more. You never know. You know, the Red yeah. Ring of Death wow. started off with a few people. It sure and did. That became huge. <laughs> and then everybody else had it, like, immediately afterwards. Oh, wow. the Scorpio, though. How hot is that thing going to get? <laughs> <laughs> they have it. No, they you got that vape and cooling. A, They're a good. They got that vape. Android. Right? They got that Jeez. vape nation in it. Uh, vape nation? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's that technology in the scorpio i feel right. a little i feel a little uh underpowered right now briar looking at your green screen and mine i feel like you're more of the incredible hawk than i am i i just don't feel right uh -huh. <laughs> your green is more green than mine god damn <laughs> My blacks are blacker. My whites are whiter. God damn it! <laughs> and I am black. Oh no! <laughs> I am black. What kind of shit is this? <laughs> Don't There's worry, we're white beastly. There's good. one story that I didn't see in the news as well, which I'm trying to desperately get in before we uh, we drop the call. What was that? Mass Effect Andromeda facial fixes. Oh right. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it Ooh, was in our comment section in, in, the, in the, the Twitch chat. A lot of people were asking about this, Gary, and they were asking specifically if you had uh, heard about this and if it actually changed the game and made it better. So please elaborate for some of the people who have been watching for us. Yeah, so it's actually the update that Robbie detailed last week, uh, The I guess the proposed update that was going to happen. Yeah. Uh, Bioware were very ambiguous in what they said. They said it was kind of like... I guess eye improvements and general conversational improvements. Mm -hmm. They fixed some other things, some certain guns that that weren't performing, and some inventory space. But the the biggest change, and the thing you've seen lots of comparative videos on, is the facial animations, the makeup, and the eyes on the characters, which is something you think is really trivial. It's only on the humans and the Asari, but it's really, really pronounced and really. 
Yeah, so the glazed over China doll look that the characters had, people have tracked it down to mostly being in the eyes. The fact that the eyes had no expression and were completely painted on and had no depth, weird. that's kind of creepy, basically. Um, but yeah, they, basically, the I'm eye really improvements have, have really made significant difference. And the most horrendous offenders, <laughs> the things that have been memed the most, <laughs> so the Admiral at the start with the, the tired face, that's been completely reanimated. So the guys have gone back wow. in and that entire sequence has been changed to make it more emotive, more that's immersive. That, so it... I'd say that there are steps towards the game being a final release. So the early access is going really, really well so far. Um, <laughs> That's what good. it is, really. Yeah, yeah the, the early yeah. access. All right. Really looking forward this to playing the finished guys. version yeah. of this this summer for sure. <laughs> Definitely. Hey, Brian, yeah. We have a deal, right? We we made this deal last week. We're going to buy this game when the full release hits the market. Yeah, version together. 1. Yeah, version one point eight nine. I am looking forward to playing this. Like. I really there want was, to. Mass there Effect's was an amazing. initial kind of like, oh my god, this game is nowhere near as good as we had hoped. But it Cat. seems like the longer it goes, there are fans of this game saying, like, yeah, I really like this game. I'm really having fun with this game. I'm, I'm locked into this game, putting a lot of hours I, I, into it. It's, it's a little depressing, though, right? I'm a huge Mass Effect fan. I don't know if you guys know that. I mean, I'm a real fan. I played all three of the original games. I love them. I have really no negative critiques other than the fact that part three just sucked with, with the end of the game. I'm like, why did I spend 90 hours to get here? Yeah. Um, but I really, really hope that Andromeda can kind of pull me back in. I, I see it's kind of both on both sides of the fence. A lot of people hate the game. A lot of people love the game. And I'm hoping that I'm really a huge fan, big enough of a fan that I a absolutely right love the fucking the, the yeah. game. Rather well, than be one of the people who say, well, Mass Effect is over, I never play it again. Like a lot of people who've been playing this game. I was enjoying it, and the biggest thing that for me has made the game really great fun is my tablet. Possibly just because I'm playing it on a new platform, and Zelda was great playing it on a new platform in the Switch. But the fact that I can take Mass Effect to the sofa or to bed with me, lay there and just put in an hour and get really immersed in the story and get deep and not have to sit there and worry about being rigid up in front of a computer because I'm playing PC... It's really good. I'm I'm really enjoying it. I'm saying, Briar, if you do get the, the, the Shield tab, it's a perfect platform to, to play something like Mass Effect where it's an adventure you can get lost in. I'll add it wow. to my, my Gary shopping list. I do apologize. Gary, 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 you're Gary, right next to the Gary, Gary how much money? The... <laughs> Gary, I've known Briar for years, but never ever heard Briar say, hey, Beastly, I'm spending 800, 600, 800 next week because Gary... Gary, you are, you know what? I don't know what business you're Gary, in. Gary, is it the voice? What happened? Like, how Should did you let sales. him do all this? He's like a heroin dealer, you know? Like, <laughs> <laughs> the good you really God damn the pusher yeah. man. I know. Thanks, Gary. What I do is yeah, I, I try to, I get Briar on these shows and I, I show him the toy and I, I let him talk about it and then it's, <laughs> that's it, you know? It's just like, we'll go for the switch next. We just put things in front of him. No, it's, um, he puts it in front of just. He just waves it in Dang front of your face, yeah. Briar, and you go, think, wow, pretty. And all of a sudden, you just have to buy it. Gary says uh, it's, it's great. He's got a nice voice. I might as well go buy one. Yeah. Jokes aside, Basically, we're, we're, yeah. very, That's we're, very similar. Um, we're very similar in our attitude towards technology. We're both big big kids at heart. Um, and both. I like am, to too. I just, I'm not me a too. Yeah. I feel, I'm just hold on. Young I feel and broke. like I'm being I'm left sorry. out here, okay? I'm not broke. Okay, I, I do what I need to do, right? I got five kids, yeah. They take a little bit of my money, ramen noodles for everybody, but I still buy my fucking games, <laughs> and I still right do there. what I need to do. Yeah, you know what? <laughs> they can get shrimp, chicken, beef, whatever the fuck they want. But the point is this. I buy the games I want, and but I'm not a PC player. I'm, I just can't. It's really hard for me. I got big hawking hands. The Wazda, I can't do. And so I feel like I'm left behind Those by Wazdas people like... Tough, man. Yes, Gary and Briar, I'm left behind. I mean, you use a you... controller on a PC. I use I the controller. I use the I controller on this all the time. I haven't done it yet. And so when I hear you guys talk about PC, I'm like, I'm just so left behind. Just hold the door open for the Beastly Gamer. I'll, I'll join you guys, I promise. I'll join when I got a good enough PC. You know, PC's my wife bad, might but... buy formula, and I'll say, hey, look, you know what, chick? I, I got to buy this virtual reality headset. Yeah, I'm yeah. sorry. I mean, Maybe brush you know? the weed in this one a little longer, if you know what I mean. Yeah. 
I right. love you. I love Let me get a couple of the other it. kids back on that shit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you're, uh, you're prioritizing all wrong. You see, you're feeding your family first and buying tech second. You see, that's where you've got to switch that around. Switch that around. I see. I see where he's gone wrong. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> you know what? Gary, I swear to you. Now I finally understand. She says, babe, we need a little bit. Of I say, hold on. I'm going to buy this first. And then we're going to talk about it. <laughs> if she's hungry, she'll find food somewhere. Don't worry. <laughs> yeah, yeah you're, you're so right, Gary. Thank we you so much. We don't want to know where, but somewhere. <laughs> hey, that's not that's not my problem. <laughs> we're going to talk about this afterwards. It's difficult <laughs> to care with a VR headset on. You can't see or hear them. <laughs> right. I mean, imagine it, right, guys? Imagine this. You're, you're, you're in space, right? You're on, the, on Mars. You're like, wow, oh, these rocks look amazing. And you hear someone say, this baby's hungry. And you say, that's not the world I'm in. <laughs> hey, no babies in this world. It's fine. Yeah, there's no babies here. The baby can't live here. Yeah, it's like when Scorpio comes out. Ramen noodles for all you kids. That's all you're you going to be. That right. You know, I am wondering about the Scorpio, too, is what the VR solution is going to be. Because that thing is going to be more than powerful enough to run VR. So it's you guys think... have an Oculus Rift type of VR experience. Yeah, that. I'm wondering if they're going to just bring the Oculus Rift over. Like, just... I think that's what they're going to do. I bet do. they will. Or I think they will. Or the Steam VR, or if they'll have their own solution. I think it's going to be the Rift, though. I think the fact is interesting. Oculus... I think it's a Rift, too, bro. I, I 100% was... agree with you. The Rift was originally detailed as part of the website for the Scorpio. So the Oculus Rift was up there when they were talking VR ready. They had the Rift branding, you know, because it's obviously affiliated through it. And they've got the Microsoft controller bundled in with the Rift. So there's. Yeah, I was going to uh, bring up that point. They have an Xbox One controller with every Rift. So that seems like an obvious one to me. It's been stripped out potentially because the Rift is still going through early hardware development. So the version of the Rift that we've got at the moment is not really suitable for living room usage. You've got the touch controllers now, which is a step in the right direction, but the next yeah. headset being, uh, I guess, wireless and possibly having better lighthouse tracking, very similar to what the the I would like HTC's to see got. them figure out a better solution. Like, I, you know, the, it works once you get it all set up, but I don't like the fact that you have to have so many USB ports that thing working. It's yeah. very demanding on a PC. Not that, just that's... on the hardware, but, like, wow, yeah. have a lot of very, like, very... Totally you know, true. A lot of but USB I, ports that have their own controllers. I think you and I are, are beta testers in the, the VR generation. We're yeah, having fun with it, but you know, in three years' time, potentially you'll see the Scorpio VR be a, a future Oculus. Yeah, they definitely need higher resolution on on the lenses too. Or yeah, place. That's going to be version two. Yeah, the version two is going to be dope. Have you guys seen the LG headset that they've been showing? No. It's no, very cool. That? It's it's uh it's going to be. A, like a Vive compatible, like a Steam compatible headset, slightly higher resolution, I believe, than the the Vive, um, but it works a, similar to the PSVR, where it's like a, you know, it's like a hard, almost helmet kind of thing that sits on top of your head. Really? Yeah, like a ring, like a hard ring, and then the goggles are on a hinge, so they just like go up, pop up on the ring. Yeah, so it's really convenient because I don't know. You know, when you're in VR and all of a sudden you want to, like, go grab your beer or you want to type something on your keyboard or something like that, you have to be Indeed. like, you know, like, eh, you know, like doing that. <laughs> yeah. So it's wow. a nice design. Really? Nice well, design. The, the, the Pi, um, made by a Chinese company, Pi up with the, the symbol and then an eye. That's a 4K headset that's currently out at the moment. But it's, I mean, it looks great. Everything I've seen review-wise says that the display is great, but just everything else around the headset is very cheap parts just made oh, so right. they can achieve that headline 4K display. But if you're watching 4K 360 video, it's it's pretty impressive. But yeah, there, there's other stuff out there, Briar, as you say. 4K will, will be nice. It'll be nice to get a higher resolution in those headsets. Yeah. In wireless, like you were saying earlier. That's right around the corner, though. Those Are those even out yet? Have they happened? Wireless? Um, there's production, mm, no, there's testing really. for the Vive uh, ones, and there's also the Vive tracker unit where that, that's been released. I think that's 10, out, mostly yeah. on mobile, that's wireless. Uh, so no, Robbie, the... actually, what, what they're doing is they're where the, where the wires plug into the headsets, they're yep. making these little boxes that are wireless, like wireless HDMI, basically. Yeah, that's and good. So you're going to wear this wireless box and then put the... <clears throat> So instead of having the wires tethered, tethering you to your PC, you'll be completely wireless. Got you. That that it's going to so be an nice. upgrade to the current headsets, both the Oculus and the Vive. And awesome. the Vive, like Gary just said, they just released a uh, tracker, which you can screw on to basically anything you want. 
you, so you could put it on your ankles and it could do you know foot <laughs> tracking you could you could put it on your keyboard so you always know where your keyboard is you yeah. can put it on your beer so you always know where your beer is <laughs> You oh, put it on a gun. I like Where that. your beard, Robbie? Put it on you can and put this it on is a, so You can accurate. put it on a gun so that, like, when you pick up the gun, it accurately tracks the gun. And, bro, this is so accurate. There's a video out of uh, one of the guys who built it, and he screwed it onto three juggling balls. And in VR, in the headset, it's it's one-to-one -one time that he can juggle the three of them just using the in-screen in display. So there's no latency That's next whatsoever. Level right there. Yeah, That's it's nice. really impressive Crazy. tracking. Like, HTC have cracked the tracking. It's yeah. really good. Wow. Uh, Insane. Yeah. And uh, Farpoint is coming out soon, right? When is that coming out? And that comes with the gun. Uh, May, May 5th, I think. May 10th. I've got it pre-ordered with the gun, so yeah, we'll, so less we'll than review that as soon as it comes out. Yeah, I haven't I haven't pre-ordered yet. I better go do that, because I bet that could yeah, sell out. Yeah, me neither. And that's one game I need to pre-order. Man. Uh, I'm going to let you know now. Um, Not me. No PSVR here. What, what, what? Well, it's co-op, so maybe three of us could make a fire team. You never. Yes, know. yes, <laughs> yes. And I'm gonna miss yes. this. No. That, and you Thank know what you. else we gotta play? That's also oh. coming right, right around the horizon. Is the Star Trek Bridge Crew? Oh, I, I can't wait. Really I'm looking such... forward to. Robbie, I'm truly a tricky, Robbie, man. you gotta get That's your awesome. PSVR set up, man. Come on, Robbie. Stop fucking things. around oh. in Canada, man. Yeah. Stop hanging around gas stations. Just hanging around Canadian gas stations. Gas stations. Hmm. Yeah, because no, it, it, it's May sixteenth, guys. I will think oh, about it. I can't May sixteenth for, for for Bridge yeah. Crew. Far Far Point. For Far Point. Okay. I'm sorry, far it's hard point. at my age to afford all this damn stuff, man. I got other stuff to pay for. It's tough. Yeah, sorry. <sighs> yeah, start looking at your career options. Maybe you hooking look is at the right move for you. Right, you know. <laughs> this is priority, man. Yeah. You know, if you got a starving <laughs> baby and you got Far Point free order, hmm. I mean, is there even really a thought? I mean, the baby's no. got to learn to take care of himself eventually. I mean, yeah. they're only going to cry for, for so long. <laughs> yeah, eventually they'll quiet down. <laughs> oh my God. But PSVR will so. last forever. Those you, memories you don't go away. Right. <laughs> as long as you pay your electric bill, boom. Come on. You're good. Oh, You're good. man. <laughs> I'm but going to news. hell. I'm going straight to hell. <laughs> oh, uh, DJ's in chat asking about Rock Band VR. You didn't happen to get Rock Band VR, did you, Gary? I didn't uh, because it's not something that, that massively interests me, but I have watched a lot of um, different. Would you like to elaborate because uh, D DJ really wants to know about it? Anything you might know that you could possibly share? So Rock Band VR is effect effectively you can screw the tracking device that comes with your Oculus Touches onto a Rock Band guitar accessory. It's not the same Guitar Hero or Rock Band that you would have played on where, where you can see what you're pressing so they've had to simplify it to turn it into chord based so there's four different chords that you can play the element uh, i guess the, the point of the game is that there's 10 different venues that you can select uh, and there's about 50 tracks with dlc tracks that you can buy and the point is that you can choose to be either like a small indie band playing a sweaty nightclub or a stadium rocker and you get the perspective of hey i'm playing the guitar and the audience is out in front of me as opposed to watching the band when you play it in a different way the critiques that I've seen, it and I've not played it, so this is coming just purely from me having an interest in VR, is that no matter how bad you play, it's a pre-recorded video. So the crowd will still cheer if you press one note for the entire song. It's really gotcha. just to live yeah. the fantasy. The score at the end will tell you if you've done well or not. The audience reaction won't. So if you're a big, big fan of rock music and you've wanted to be a guitarist your whole life and it's your dream and you can finally live it this way, I'm sure you'll love it. Me personally, uh, you know, I appreciate some people love it. It's it's probably not my jam, um, so I've not picked it up. What, but rock music? No, hey, hey. being the guitarist, I love to go and watch it. I'd oh. like to be in the audience watching them, but I've got no uh, burning desire to be up on stage performing. It's just, you know, not not my bag. But it looks good, you know. If you, if you guys are interested, if you follow in it, I can Gary try on Twitter, out. then you know he's not trying to be a rock star. You know, he's a real thug. Let's fucking shit up. He said so. thug. Just let, him be he, nice. no. let him follow his dream. Yeah, but that's it. I mean, this this week, uh, I don't know if you guys want to give indications to the audience of what we're going to be playing this week, if they want to play along um, and, and try things out, because this week I've got Persona 5 on the menu. That's definitely going to be played. Mm. There's going to be some more VR. I've seen there's a really great Viking-looking game that's just released on the PSVR that's been out on Steam for a year. Um, and I tend to try to avoid just covering the, the PC VR stuff, because I want to try to get the 
the ones that are multi-plat. So I'll be trying that out. I think it's ten dollars at the moment. It's a two-hour experience. I'll be picking well, that I'll up. I'll buy that. Um, so that'll be there. So Persona, that in VR, and I may will be playing Hyper Dimension, Neptunia, Rebirth one, two, and three because I picked well, them up I, for I've been, the PC. I've been burned by Hyper Dimension, Neptunia for so long. It's, it's so hard for me to get back into that. So I'm I'll just, be picking them up. It's so scary to get back into that world. Oh my god! Passing the mic. I'll, I'll do it if you do it. All right, I, so I mentioned I've already I've already put ten hours in, so I'm kind of so it's so scary. You know, I it's really hard for me. I'm a big black guy jumping into that world. It's kind of scary, um, but I'll do it if you do it, Gary. Guarantee. We'll do it together, brother. Solidarity. One <laughs> <laughs> brother Pepsi. <laughs> and do you guys have any special plans that people might want to play alongside? Yeah, it's all about Iron Banner. I'll be streaming Iron Banner this weekend oh, yeah. in Destiny. Oh, yes. in Iron Destiny. Banner, and awesome. obviously King's Fall will be the raid starting on Tuesday. Uh, so we'll be doing King's Fall viewer runs. We'll be doing Iron Banner with viewers. We're going to have a lot of fun. Awesome. And you'll be streaming all of that, will you, bro? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Fantastic. I'll be getting involved. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh-huh. Basically, Robbie, you guys got anything planned or just whatever the week takes you? Well, I made yeah, about I 200 know. videos over the weekend, so it'll be coming up all this week. So you guys just stay tuned to the BC Gamer YouTube channel, and you'll see what I've done. It's been really difficult having a family of 400 children, but it's been you something I... You do have I've... 400 now, don't you? Four, 398, but it's Is really close. that high? Oh, yeah. Where did all the births come from? Holy hell. Lot, lots of sex and a woman who doesn't give up. But... Babe, it's just popping out of the chest, yeah. I mean, it's like the Born alien. Other way. She goes, babe, I think I got a cold. I go, really? She goes, oh, and it's a baby. I'm like, oh, yeah. <laughs> baby just pop out. You know? Yep. That's how it works. That's how pregnancy works. <laughs> and so definitely follow the Beastly Gamer channel, and uh, you'll see everything I got planned for this week. I love you guys. Thank you all so much for watching the Beastly, Ga the Beastly Thoughts live show this week thank you all so much <laughs> all right guys have an awesome weekend and we'll see you next week all right bye everybody baby's just popping out everywhere Not <laughs>